What is up, y'all? I hope everyone's having a fantastic day. Um, I wanted to do a story time video. Um, basically, uh, hopefully this will be some sort of inspiration to someone out there because um, one bad habit that I have is like, I can't just do something or I can't just learn something, even if it's beneficial to me. Like, I have to learn things the hard way, right? And this has been an issue I've had like, throughout my life, but I'm going to tell y'all a quick story about what propelled me into wanting to learn how to change a tire, all right? Let me preface this by saying, uh, I live in a big city, my whole life I've lived in big cities, right? So basically, if I ever have gotten a flat tire in my whole entire life, at all times, I'm always like within a quarter of a mile or at the absolute most one mile away from a gas station, right? So, I say that to say, if I were to ever have an issue like that, all I'd have to do is drive to the nearest gas station and they would put the spare that was in my trunk, they'd just pop it on for me, usually for like five bucks, you know what I mean? So it was like a five dollar problem. That's how I always viewed it. Um, and that's how I lived for many years. So, flash forward, um, I started a new job. I did contract work where basically, I went all over the country. I drove all over. Like I saw many, many different states with this job. It was a lot of fun. Um, so uh, I was living in D.C. at the time. This particular place the, where the contract was held was Buffalo, New York. Um, and this was in the winter time. So I'd never been to Buffalo. I've never been to New York. Never been anywhere near there before. So um, this was my plan. I was young and dumb. I was like 21 years old at the time, right? I had to be at the contract. They pay for a hotel room and stuff like that, but I wanted to stretch out the hotel time, right? They paid for, I think it was like two weeks, but if I got there one day early, I'd have to pay instead of them, which I should have just done, right? This is what I did. After this, I learned to always go to a new city one day early and set up camp to avoid what I'm about to tell you right now. So the time, I think it was a, let's say it was a 12 hour trip, right? And I needed to arrive at this particular building at 8 a.m. So once again, young and dumb, uh, I left the house at 6 p.m., right? Giving myself two hours of leeway. That's it, just two hours. That's nothing, that's nothing. That. In my mind, I think I was like, okay, I'm going to stop for gas one time. I'm going to stop for coffee one time. I'm going to stop for bathroom breaks. Okay, two hours is plenty of time. Young and dumb. Anyway, so I leave. It's about 6 p.m. I hit the road. Everything's going great, right? As I get closer to Buffalo, it's snowing, right? And this Buffalo winter is something like I've never seen before. The only way I can classify it is snow tornado. Um, and when I get about, I want to say I'm about one hour outside of Buffalo. Um, for those that you don't that don't know, New York. I mean, it was like there was nothing. It was nothing. Like imagine like like a country town or something. Like it was just woods and flatland. Like there was nothing. It was so desolate. And it was about 1.5 feet of snow on the ground. So, I'm driving on the highway, and I hear a boom, 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 right? Instantly, I already knew what it was. This must have been, I want to say, it, it must have been like at 2 a.m. or something. So, it's 2 a.m., pitch black, I'm in a city I've never been to, in a state I've never been to, completely desolate. Uh, imagine on the side of the highway, no street lamps even, and I have a flat tire. So, I do, you know, what I've done my whole life. I googled the nearest gas station, except this time it wasn't a quarter of a mile away. It was like seven miles away, right? So I'm driving, I'm driving and all that. And this is something that I had never experienced before. Um, I still remember, even though so many years ago, remember which tire it was. It was the back passenger tire. And at this point, the tire was flat, right? I drove the 10 miles all the way to the highway, and this thing was uh, oops, thing was completely shredded. This was 
completely shredded. It was hanging on, it was hanging on by a thread. Like imagine like the thread of a tattered t-shirt, like a t-shirt of a homeless person or some rich trendy young person. So when I got to the gas station, I didn't know anything about car maintenance, right? I still barely do, but back then it was, you know, to the extreme, I knew nothing about it. So I told the gas station guy, I said, hi, do y'all sell fix a flat? And he said, yeah, right over there. So I said, oh, great. He said, are you having car trouble? I said, yeah, yeah, um, you think you can help me? So he came from behind the counter. He came into the parking lot with me and he looked at the tire and his face was like, I was like, yeah, so you all saw fix a flat, right? He was like, fix, fix a flat. It's, it's not on the rim. You have no tire, the tire is shredded. You have, you've lost your tire, it's gone. I was like, so you're saying fix a flat won't fix this. To which, at that point, I mean, he wasn't helpful. You know what I mean? He wasn't going to do nothing for me. So I got back on the road, what else I could do? So I got back on the highway. Now keep in mind, I'm on a flat tire, right? I'm on a flat tire and <laughs> the unthinkable happens. I'm going like 50 or 60, right? And I hear, shoo, it was the weirdest noise ever. The tire had dislodged itself from the rim. So now I'm driving on a rim, on a metal rim, if you can imagine. Three tires, three rims, one rim. Back passenger. It's like, doo -doo -doo. I've never done this before. Snow on the ground. Remember, torna a snow tornado. Uh, I can barely see. I can barely see in front. So I pull over to the side. Um, someone pulls over right on the side of the road, um, a nice, a good Samaritan. And he said, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm fine. Right? Like, why would you ask that? Why? Cause I'm missing a tire. Like, why would you ask me that? So I sit there for a little while, you know, the time is ticking. I'm like, dang, I've got to make this work contract. Like I got to get there. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? So I pull, take that. I take the exit. Now I'm getting more comfortable driving on just a rim it's weird because like i'm slipping and sliding the street is very slippery so pull off the exit find another place to park at and i call my car insurance and i say i tell them what happened i said i have a flat tire and they said uh they said okay you don't have roadside assistance so you're not covered you got to pay a hundred dollars out of pocket and i said in my mind i was like okay fine please oh that's fine come on so Tell me why <laughs> this is prevent, prevent uh, preemptive measures could have been taken. Tell me why this tow truck pulls up. I'm waiting an hour in the cold in my car. My gas tank is like this. I'm running out of gas, so I can't run the engine for the heat. I don't have a blanket. I don't have a sweater because I'm young and cool and I just, you know, wore a t-shirt in the winter. So I'm freezing. I'm freezing in the desolate night. Tow truck pulls up. I said, thank God you're here, man. Please change this tire. He said, all right, where's the spare? I said, spare? And I thought back to my mind, and it was so weird because I, I flashed back to two years prior where so, and it's a freak accident. In some way, somehow, I got a flat tire on my spare tire, and I put it in my trunk, and I forgot to buy a brand new spare tire. So I opened the trunk and the tow truck driver's like, looks like you have a spare, your spare tire is flat and you're, what, you're calling is a, you're, what you're calling a flat tire is just a rim. So what do you want me to do? I said, what, what, I mean, I don't know what to do. He was like, he just says, I won't charge you for showing up. And he just turns around and leaves. So this taught me a lot. I'm essentially in the mountains. I was in the mountains at this time dark, desolate, 1.5 feet of snow, I'm shivering, um, and this much gas in the tank, right? I still have somewhere to go, so young, dumb, I decided to hit the highway again. I get back on the highway, go back to the gas station. Um, it was the same exact gas station, and the guy was looking out the window like this, looking at me, and in my mind, I'm just like, Psh, mind your business, so I put you know, I put gas in the gas and what else can I do? I got to drive, right? It's going to, I mean, if I run out of gas, I'll make problems even worse. So I put like 20 bucks in the gas, ta gas tank. I hit the highway and I start driving and I inch closer to closer to Buffalo until basically I couldn't drive like 50 feet without swerving in the ice. So I just pull over to some random town. By now, keep in mind, it was overnight. 
So I had to deal with this from 2 a.m. until about 6 a.m. Um, oh, yeah, one more thing. In my mind, once when the tow truck driver was leaving, keep in mind, I had a flat spare tire and a rim. So even, even if I wanted to go to a tire shop to buy a tire, it was 3 o'clock in the morning. Nothing was open, especially not in this desolate-ass mountain place. So I had to wait till 8 a.m. I think the earliest may have been 7 a.m. for a tire shop to open, but that's still four hours in the freezing cold. So um, gaining ground on the highway I'm driving about this time. It's like about 6.30 a.m. And, you know, uh, let's just say I found a tire shop at 7 a.m. So uh, at this point, oh, and I take it back. I was not one hour out of Buffalo when I had the flat tire. I was probably like three hours out of Buffalo. I was driving hours on that rim. People on the highway were looking over at me like, what the? So now I really am one hour outside of Buffalo and I pull over and I'm basically like, I can't do this no more. My car ain't moving. You know, what else can I do? I got no options. Um, unfortunately, thinking back on it, I mean, I didn't have any money. I know I said, like, when the when my car insurance said it'll be $100 to come out there to change your flat tire, um, basically, I didn't have $100. I was going to try to just negotiate with the tow truck driver and be like, yo, please, I'm begging you, please. But there was nothing for him to change anyways. So now I have no money, no tire, no spare tire. I'm in a city I've never been to before. One point feet of snow. I'm shivering. I may have been dealing with hypothermia. I don't know, because I kept like falling asleep and waking up. Like my whole body was shivering so much. Anyways, I called the one number, you know, that is always there. Thank God for them. 911. I called them. I said, I need a police officer. They said, why? I said, I have a, f <laughs> you know, that Geico commercial. Like, I have a flat tire. <laughs> it was like that, basically. So the cop shows up and he's like, you called 911? I said, man, I told him my whole story. And I think he was kind of impressed, I guess, because he was just like, let me see what I can do. And he called a local tow truck company. I'm sorry, he called a local tire shop, which came to me, took my rim off my car, drove it to their tire shop, put a tire on it, brought it back to me. And he said, right here, sir, it'll be $85. I said, I don't have $85, man. I'm sorry. He said, he said, I, the work has already been done. I mean, he, we're like, he's like, look around. We're like basically in the middle of a field. You got the police officer standing there. You got the tire guy. You got me in my Passat, like. I don't even know how the fuck I got... I don't know how I got here. Excuse my language. So I give him what I got. I mean, anything I had. All the cash in my wallet, literally, which was like 40 bucks. I give it to him. Now I have a tire. Now I'm speeding on the highway in the snow. I call the contract people. Um, I don't even go into detail with them. I just tell them, hey, I'm sorry I had a flat tire. I'm going to be a couple hours late. I arrive... And that's it. I arrive and they're like, you're going to be in such and such hotel for this amount of time. Here's your per diem money, all that stuff. But in my mind, now, now I have a tire jack in the trunk. I have the, you know, the tire wrench or whatever it's called to take the lug nuts off. I have a blanket in the car, in the trunk. Um, it's, it's so much easier. It's so, it's a trillion times easier to have it and not use it or not need it than to wish you had it. Because I'm telling you, man, if I had a tire jack, thinking back on that story, I would have been in and out of that gas station in 10 minutes. I wouldn't have needed to call a tow truck. I wouldn't have needed help from nobody. You know, imagine it could have gone much, much worse. Imagine like I'm in a place where there's no tow truck. There's a sorry. We, we, there's no one for, for us to send to you right now at 3 o'clock in the morning. There's no tire shops near you. You're stranded. Maybe, I mean, it could have just gone much, 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 much worse. So I say that to say, after that whole ordeal, first thing I did was I went to Walmart, I bought a tire jack, bought the lug nut wrench thing. I went to right there in the Walmart parking lot. As soon as I bought it, I found an area with some room in it. 
parked in the parking lot, went to YouTube, typed in how to fix a, how to fix a flat tire, and I taught myself right there. It, it took no time. I learned. It's super easy to do. So that's my story. I was eager to learn then. By that time, I was like, I'm the most eager person to ever learn this ever. So that's my story. That's what propelled me to learn how to change a tire.